Hi friends, hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Melin. So as NEET page 2024 stands postponed, now we can completely focus on INICT May session. So here are a few things that I wanted to share with you. So when I was preparing for my exam, I realized it's not about only the hard work, but it's the smart work that you have to do because we have so many things to do. So many, we have 19 subjects, so many books to read, so many exams to give. So how do I manage all this time and how, what are the things that I focus on? So I was very lucky during my preparation. I met a lot of mentors who guided me through and uh, what I'm going to share with you all today is not something that I have invented. It is something I learned from my seniors and uh, whatever I have, you know, my experience while mentoring the students over the last few years. So I'm sure this will uh, definitely help you. So as we are going ahead with the preparation, there are a few points that we should keep in mind. So again, I'll try to you know reiterate the simple thing that NICT is going to offer you a golden chance. See now, NITPJ has been postponed, so you have a good you know around 125 days, uh, if I calculate uh, from today, until your exam. So definitely, it offers a very good chance for you. And you know, NICT I find it relatively easier than NITPJ because for NITPJ you have to read a lot of things, you have to read a lot of data, a lot of facts. On contrary to that, INICT is majorly about basic sciences. I conducted a poll also after November INICT and what we found out that it's the same, you know, uh, they are following the same thing one after another. That majority of the paper is about the basic sciences. Also, they check your how well you know your basic sciences and your fundamental things. Like, you know, how well is, well your, uh, is your base? Because if you want to become a surgeon, that does not mean that you should know your surgery well. If you become, if you want to become a good obstetrician, that does not mean that you have to read obstetrics now. You have to know your anatomy, physio, biochemistry, pharma well. Then you can be, you can actually become a good uh, obstetrician and you will get training for that. Smart work. As you have a limited time, 125 days might sound that you know you have a lot of time. But when you start reading, you'll realize, you know, you have very less time. So that is why doing a smart work, we have to prefer over a hard work. And earlier, you know, a lot of students used to feel that NICT is not for me. It's a very tough exam because AIMS, you know, they want to take only the toppers. It's not like that. A lot of majority of the people who crack NICT and a very good rank, a decent rank, they are actually average student. And as new INIs are coming up, initially there was only AIMS to the LEPGI and Jipmer had a separate exam. But now we have a lot of AIMS and there are a lot of good AIMS. I mean, they have a good faculty and it's, you know, you are getting to uh, choose your dream branch. So you are getting a golden chance by doing a NA uh, CT. So as most of you have been, you know, completing your first read and planning for your revisions. First, I'll try to tell you that even if you are doing your first reading or you are doing your revision, you are planning your revision. First, finish your important subject, which I call them as a rank building subject. Now, what are the rank building subject? I get a lot of messages about, you know, how to get into top 1000. So when I started giving my uh, AIMS exam, I'll tell you my experience that I was a very good. Uh, I knew that, you know, I had a very good command on my uh, basic sciences. Like my uh, medicine was not that good. My surgery was not that good. Even the short subjects were not that good. But my first and second prof subjects were very good. When I gave my first times attempt during internship and even the PGI when there is to be a different exam I got a very good rank like not the rank that I'll get a seat but like in AIMS I got within 2000 rank and in PGI I got like within 1000 rank and I realized you know the reason why I got such a good rank because AIMS is about basic sciences and then I gave multiple attempts of INICT but my rank never went out of 1000 and the majority of the reason was my anatomy physio biochemistry pathopharma and micro was like very good and as majority of the question paper from that subject, I never got out of that, you know, rank even till then. That is why start your timetable. Whenever you plan your timetable, finish your anatomy, physio, biochemistry, pathopharma, micro first. Then go ahead with your short subjects because they are going to be very important in deciding your rank. Lot of students, they waste a lot of time in medicine, surgery. You see, they are a huge subject. But if you have a good knowledge of your physio, biochemistry, micro and pharma, your med most of the medicine will be covered. So. You know, that is why I called a smart study over a hard study. Now, how do you augment that? So you start reading the subject from your notes. Now, what you have to do additionally, you have to do last five to eight years previously asked questions. You know, I have been again and again in my videos in the past, I've been talking about the importance of previously asked questions. Every YouTuber, you know, medical YouTuber that is there will always tell you about how important it is PYQs because Sometimes the questions will not repeat like them, but the topics do repeat. That is why you should be. And it's like, you know, you already know the answer. 
and this is where you get advantage over other students and you have to go as back as you know up to eight years because anatomy won't change right the biochemistry also doesn't change much there are just few things that new you know advances you get might uh, new drug or new method but you know anatomy physio biochemistry they are the same subject so try to do at least last five to eight years you have an ample time try to do five to eight years now reading the explanations whenever you do the pyqs try to go through the explanation that is important like first time when you do it read explanation because from explanation you can understand from like you know what different ways the question can be asked asked and you can tackle that question every time now when you approach toward the big four jaise maine kaha ki your basic sciences should be good but jab aap big four ko tackle karte hain your medicine surgery psm now scan you don't have to read page to page agar mujhe pick karna hai in charon mein se important subject like two out of this four then surgery knobs guy ne are high yield for anesthesia medicine you don't have to read page to page i'll you know pin a uh, A video I had made about the important topics, and all classes they have given you know important topics from all the subject. So just do important topics specifically from medicine and PS. You don't have to read that page to page. It will eat up lot of your time, and the yield will be less. There's a book called USMLE First Aid. Lot of YouTubers recommend it. I also do it. I'll say that you know adding YouTube, uh, adding this USMLE First Aid to your preparation completely as a new book will be difficult at this stage. but at least try to mug up all the charts all the graphs all the tables and images that are there go through all the images go through all the charts go through all the tables they are very extremely high especially for the biochemistry pharma anatomy biostatistics and micro for this subjects this book is extremely high yield and this should be the part of your uh, preparation you know plan and you have to just spend like 30 minutes daily like when you have a tea like evening tea you take a first aid and go through the charts go through the images and inko aap acche se dekh lo and when you read it multiple times like you don't have to read like first it just once aapko at least three times before exam you have to finish this book so you will have a better yield and it helps you know when i was preparing for my exam as well my senior you know told me that it helps somehow and you know you don't understand you can't explain how it helps but it helps it helps because it has a very uh, you know high yield material in a very concise plan so how do i go about it like i have around 125 days till nict may 2024 so i'll say that if you are if you have already you know about to finish your first reading uh, or if you are someone who are starting a fresh you know now you feel like you know need page is postponed so i should start a fresh i'll say that you know spend about 55 days either to complete your revision or to do your first read okay how are you going to divide that day i'll tell you in the next slide then do first revision in 40 days and do another revision in 30 days as as i said revision is important no matter you know that is why you should be plan your uh, you know you should have that plan made unless and until you revise what you have read twice it's very difficult for you to you know answer and get that information again uh, in the exam so how do we divide this first reading so i have divided these subjects into rank building rank maintaining and rank deciding subjects so what are those so rank building subjects will bring you in top 2000 like in nicet there are around 80000 to 1 lakh students who write nicet so rank building subject if you have a good command on that then definitely 100% you'll end up in top 2 to 3000 rank maintaining subject as i call them the big four subject that they will maintain you there a rank deciding subject will decide whether you end up in the top 500 of 3000 or after that okay so i'll explain you in the subsequent slide that you know having the command on this subject will help you so what is important here is rank building and rank deciding subject so whenever you plan your first uh, read or revision as i said that rank building subjects are the most important so our attention will be that so for example so this is just a skeleton for those who are having difficulty in forming a timetable this is just something that you know what i was doing during uh, my preparation days and will definitely help you so you start with your anatomy physio biochemistry so here uh, you have around nine subject which are important and i call them rank building subjects so these are your anatomy physio biochem patho pharma micro surgery obs gyne and pedia so you are going to allot them 6 days each out of this 55 days so one parallel you go with the rank building subject and the other parallel of the same day will either be a rank deciding subject or a rank maintaining subject okay so every day you give around 7 hours for uh, this subject so you give around 42 hours in total for rank deciding subject which are your short subject again very important just three four questions but very simple and they will decide whether you end up in a very top rank or in in between rank so you have to give around four days each for this subject and around 3.5 hours a day you give so around in 14 hours you can finish all this subject 
rank maintain is subject are your medicine psm of the nent again these subjects are i don't feel that way they are very high see of the definitely you see a lot of questions in nicet from of the but they are extremely difficult very high you know they are very difficult questions to answer they are very highly specific you know very specific questions ENT again, you know, we don't see a lot of questions from ENT, and if you, even if you see, they are very easy questions, so you don't have to spend a lot of time on that. Okay, so how do you divide your day? How do you uh, do that? So here, I hope you are able to see it. So what you do, you divide your day in such a way that you start like in the morning if you are getting at seven. So in morning three hours, you read your major subject that is your rank uh, building subject for three hours. Then you see my reading one subject continuously can be boring and can be monotonous. So my one of my favorite teacher used to say. that changing the subject is the best time pass you know if you feel bored change the subject you will you know feel uh, interested so you do, do that you know combine two subject like here in 7 days i have combined anatomy with dharma so you do that so we have allotted like 6 days for each so in 6 days you try to finish your anat combine that with dharma then you have your lunch then again for 2 hours you read your major subject that is your anat which is your uh, you know rank building subject then solving pyqs again in your day you have to dedicate a time to solve previous year questions and that is why i have you know spent time i have given here uh time to solve the questions okay so around one and half hour you give in the evening then you take a nap see it's very important because it's a very long journey you should you will get you will feel burn out so it's okay to take a break then for a, for an hour you can read first aid so if you feel like you don't want to include see as i said it's a supplementary book it's not must it should not like you know you should not feel like that i must have this book if you have it it's okay even if you don't it's fine you just spend 30 minutes to 1 hour just revising those charts which i talked about then you do again pyqs of the last you know another 1 and 1/2 uh, hour for pyqs again solving mcqs daily so 70% of the day you do your uh, theory and 30% of your day you do your mcqs okay then you have your dinner then again you go back and do your uh, you know other subject like you do your uh, major subject of anatomy and before sleeping you again read your short subject like dharma so by this schedule you give 7 hours for the rank building subject which is a major subject and 3 and 1/2 hour for your minor subject around 3 hours for your mcqs and around hour or 30 minutes for your first aid so this is how you de- decide your day and i know it's tough but i am not saying that you have to do this from day 1 start with like you know in 4 hours 5 hours daily and eventually your uh, time will increase now what are the points that you should uh, mm-hmm. note as i have said that revisions are important it should not just the number of revisions it's not like you know there are students who have you know revised like four five times and still don't get the desi- desired result because the revisions the quality is not good so the quality of the revision matters so make sure you are understanding what you are uh, reading lot of students feel that you know system wise approach should be better like you know the like cardiovascular i read physio i read anat i read pharma i read micro of the uh, i read medicine of the same but i think you know it's very difficult to revise when you go uh, system wise so i feel subject because a lot of students have this question i would suggest go subject wise it will help you finish your portion faster and it's even make it will make your revision also better and you can revise uh, these things faster as well now there is a lot of uh, you know uh, buzz about doing the q banks and jts so definitely there are students who have done you know uh, q banks and crack their exam but you know that's a very risky thing there are a lot of students who join the foundation batch and they are reading their notes from their mbbcs so don't compare yourself with them you have, you have not finished your notes and you want to do the q bank it's like you know you don't have a knowledge of the things and you directly want to test yourself and you want to test your uh, uh, knowledge that's that's not a nice thing and that's not possible if your theory is strong even if you have not done the q banks you will do in your exam similarly for the grand test you know a lot of students they are so tempted about seeing their rank that what is my rank and they will give the exam the rank is bad they will get depressed they will again you know uh, they will read something a little, little bit again give gt and i will try to you know and again the rank won't be nice and they will f- feel even depressed that is you know that is actually how rank uh, gts are harming lot of students you should start giving your gts when you have at least done one reading after that you start giving your revision and at least like once or once or twice in a month that's it if you want to write more than that it is i don't know how it is going to help because unless and until your theory is strong how will your you know jt will help you unless and until you are prepared you are going to a war unprepared so definitely you are going to lose and you are going to get depressed and that is a vicious cycle inicity is how you prepare and also how you attempt exam even if your preparation is not up to the mark even if you are not able to finish the portion that you have planned see i have given you the timetable 
I used to revise my timetable every two weeks. It's very difficult to stay, you know, with the timetable and, you know, to stay with that. It's very difficult. But practicing this exam, as I have said, you know, practicing exam, giving your GTs, limited GT that with the similar intensity of the exam will help you conquer the exam. So you have to keep your cool. And that is something you have to learn on the way. Also, a lot of students say, sir, classes are releasing that and there are multiple books for the same source. Should I do, you know, the visual class also? Should I do the MCQs also? Should I do the custom modules also? Should I, should I do the GTs also? See, you have to prepare for the 150 questions out of 200 that are you, you are going to get. And these 150 questions will definitely come from the notes irrespective of which classes you are doing. You will all be having this. 20, 30 questions are in INICT are like, you know, they are like examiner's ego. Nobody knows them. If you, if some of them get right by chance, some of them, they don't. It's, like, it's just a matter of chance. So you have to plan your study in such a way that you have to prepare for 150 questions. Similarly, when you attempt your exam, don't spend your time. You know, there are some questions you have never heard about, but you keep, you know, scratching your head that, you know, try to remember it. Because, but you, if you have never read it, skip it. 150 questions. This time, INICT has released the number of, you know, correct that the toppers have got. And you will realize what I have been saying. It's not like 180 or 190 that the toppers get. Even by correcting 140, 150 questions, you can end up in the top 200, 300. And that is the reality. So trust me, you have to prepare for 150 questions and not 200. Also, whenever you make plans, as I have told you, I have given you the sample target. Just make small plans first. Like in one month, I'm going to do that. And make a doable target. If you are not able to finish it in six days, it's okay. You can reduce some times from the revision days and add it here. So make a doable target and don't make over enthusiastic planning that I'm going to start reading 20 hours from tomorrow. The best every day will look different. You know, I was... Uh, I have been, you know, saying this that if you are, if you have to see your growth every day, like day one, day two, day three, day four, it the, your best bit won't be same every day. Some days you will study four hours, some days you will study ten hours, some days you will study eight hours, some days you will study fourteen hours. Again, you will come down. But it that does not mean that your preparation is not good. It's just your best every day is good. It's different. Four hours of reading, if it is focused and nice, it's fine. You don't have to study like 10 and 15 days every day. You know, you have to, and slowly, slowly, you will get that pace. As I have released this timetable, it's not like from tomorrow, you'll start, read, uh, you know, reading that 16, 17 hours daily. Slowly, 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 you will pick up uh, that uh, pace. Finally, INICT definitely, you know, some of you might be feeling, you know, out of comfort zone because a lot of critical thinking involves, a lot of, you know, clinical questions come. But you have to get used to it, you know. You don't have to forget your ambitions and if you try to be too comfortable that, you know, my NITPG is far away, I don't want to give INICT, you are missing on a very good chance. So get out of this drug called comfort. If you feel comfortable, nothing is going to grow uh, there. And be the reason why people, you know, believe in hard work and miracles. When I was preparing you know, students like me, uh, when I started my channel, I, I started to, after like two years after I cracked my exam. The reason being people will see still approaching me, you know, like how you did it. Because I think that time I feel that, you know, people like me, students like me, were the reason why people still believe that they can get into, you know, institute like AIMS and they believed in the hard work and miracle. So I believe that, you know, you are someone, even if you are average student or, or you feel like, you know, you won't be able to do this. So be the reason why people, you know, in believe that, yes, I can do it and I can definitely crack uh, AIMS and I can get into AIMS and PGI. So get up, show up and don't give up. I wish you all the best and take care.